Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Bully. If you enjoy this video, please become the principal at your local school and gradually introduce a new uniform so that slowly but surely everyone is dressed in a pelican costume, as this would really help spread the good word of my channel. Bully, a game that puts you in a boarding school known as Bullworth Academy, whose goal is to sculpt the future generations into tomorrow's world leaders. This is done by attending class, kicking other students' teeth in, getting arrested, taking photos of underage kids, which is socially acceptable as you too play as an underage kid, making out with literal prostitutes, and even shooting police officers with a DIY rocket launcher. At least this place prepares students for the real world though. All my school taught me was how to play the recorder. I graduated knowing nothing about managing my finances or how to effectively communicate, but if you needed a young, tone-deaf Australian to play hot cross buns, I was your guy. Anyway, you might be thinking, how did this game change your life then, moist smellykin? Well, for that, we need to go back to Christmas Eve. The decorations were up and the snow had finally fallen, but despite being the season of giving, we still have to go to class. This is the kind of cruel school curriculum that I think the world needs more of. These days, we're giving out participation ribbons when a lad gets his first erection. It's pathetic. So first, class is shop, where you work on cars, or in my case, I guess a bicycle. Now not my proudest gaming moment, but I fail the class, and like I swear I was rotating the left stick like a boss, but apparently not. Failing this class is like accepting that your destiny is the glass pipe. After swallowing that harsh dose of reality, I decide to hit on this girl who clearly developed early to make myself feel better, but she doesn't respond in the way I'd hoped. Between you and me, I was hoping for a pity handjob. Anyway, I've got my afternoon class and it's photography, so let's go get that victory royale. I have to take photos of the school banners, but I can't figure out how to do it, and I just keep taking photos of exactly what's in front of me. Unfortunately, it's young children, but as previous addressed, I'm also a young child, so this is totally not weird or creepy. Like if I was an Australian guy in my 20s, then yeah, that'd be pretty weird. But I'm not. I'm just wee little Jimmy Hopkins. I get the pass like a boss. You're really inspiring me, miss. My science teacher wants to see me, and man, this Back to the Future Malacca has so many sunspots. You probably regret not meticulously applying sunscreen when you were a kid, hey chief. The sunburn is no joke, so put on some 50 SPF plus. Don't be a hero. He wants me to sneak into the preppy rich kid's building and poison their giant plant because he wants the biggest plant of them all. Sort of seems a little bit petty, not to mention exploiting students, but hey, I'll do it. I change into my peppy vest and get a haircut so that I'll fit right in. Well look, if I end up flunking school, at least I can have a strong career as a Pantene shampoo model. I mean look at that volume and shine in those chestnut waves. I speak to Biff and I'm like, yo, Tommy Hilfiger, Frisbee, Incest, Daddy's Trust Fund, Soggy Biscuit, Boat Shoes, and he lets me right in. I head to the greenhouse and grab some poison flamethrower weapon thing that every good greenhouse should have and proceed to start poisoning their giant plant. What's with me destroying so many plants and trees in videos lately? You guys probably think I don't care about the environment, which I definitely do. Like I refill my plastic water bottles and then throw them at homeless people, which in my opinion is a fun, innovative way to recycle and keep the homeless hydrated. Obviously the preps weren't too happy about this, so I gave them a little spray too. It doesn't actually damage them at all, but exposure to pesticides can have long-term health effects. So I hope you both enjoy developing Parkinson's disease in your mid 40s. Anyway, it's been a long day, and so I hit the sack as it's Christmas tomorrow. How exciting. I wake up and hear an announcement over the loudspeaker. <laughs> Wow, a present for little old me? I wonder what it could be. On my way to the headmaster's office, I see this kid being bullied on today of all days. I really should do something here, it's the happy season after all. And so I wait until Mr. Leather Jacket has finished tormenting him, and then UFC style, I beat him to a pulp. You see, what I'm doing here is character building. Give a man a fish and he eats for a day, but beat a man half to death and he will always... I don't really know where I'm going with this. So I head to pick up my present, looking like Zac Efron 
Sean's less successful ugly cousin and it's a gift from my mum. It's a green sweater with Rudolph the red-nosed motherfucking reindeer on it, absolutely pinnacle fashion. I head into town to get my hair shaved down as I feel Jimmy's buzz cut is simply too iconic to mess with. I decide to be a good person and give this guy some spare change, but after doing this, he hits your boy with this. That's the silliest shirt I ever did see. Now obviously I don't take no sass, so I beat his homeless ass. Wow, lots of jokes about the homeless, but I mean if they're so concerned about being homeless, why not just buy a home? I fail to realise police are nearby and I get arrested. What a terrible Christmas and now I've got a criminal record. I decide it's time to rescue my holiday. Firstly, I help Junkie Santa set up his photo shoot. You know the ones with those elves that are just dwarfs and you sit on Santa's lap and call him daddy? I mean, ask him for a present? I have to take out the real Santa photo shoot first to create demand for our bootleg Santa photo shoot and this teaches me about the free market economic equilibrium. In the business world, this is what they refer to as a hostile takeover. Holy crap, I'm learning, but my way the hood way. So yeah, I help with this and learn some valuable fiscal concepts and get paid in cold hard cash. Later, my nerd friends give me a handheld rocket launcher, which seems sort of overly violent, but I'm not complaining. I even play in a Christmas pageant, and look, I'm not saying the kids who go in these performances end up dying a 40-year-old virgin, but I mean, you make a kid dance in an elf costume and they're probably not procreating anytime soon. All in all, a pretty good Christmas, so I call it a night and get ready to tackle tomorrow's challenges. I get punch-ups, but it amazes me that this kid is just getting beaten up with a baseball bat. Like, that's brain damage territory. Somebody should really check if he's okay. Anyway, Johnny Vincent, who is the head of the Greasers clique, wants to meet me as he is having some problems with his girlfriend. I go and meet him, and believe it or not, he is actually a man, not a lesbian. My girlfriend walked into the room during this part of the mission and genuinely asked if he was a lesbian. So anyway, this Johnny lesbian is worried his girl Lola is cheating on him with one of the preppy guys and he wants me to check it out. Say no more, as apparently I run errands for literally everyone in this whole town. I got you. I have to take photos of them holding hands, kissing, publicly fornicating and all that juicy stuff for proof. I succeed in doing this, and look, when my YouTube channel inevitably dies because the small amount of success I've had goes to my head and I start to become an arrogant pelican, perhaps I will try my hand at paparazzi. You see, taking photos of topless girls makes you a pervert, unless you're paparazzi. It's like real life hacks. So I bring the photos back to the big girl and he obviously isn't that happy about it. I mean, who would be? You just found out the love of your life is shacking up with a lawyer's son. He asks me to get the prep guy to follow me so that I can lead him back to the skate park so that he can kill him. Wow, that seems a little bit extreme, but hey, I'm an ally of the LGBT community, so I'll proudly help you commit this homicide. I get God's attention and sure enough, he follows me back to the skate park, but he's not quite ready for what's coming. When we get there, Johnny's waiting on his bike and they exchange some relatively cringy, harsh words. A super cool, uber epic bicycle fight then breaks out, but I decide to just use my rocket launcher to blast a few of the preps. The weapons in this game have really escalated since the first video, like soon we'll be taking RPGs to calculus. Of course, I did some tricks too, as you know I send it harder than a postman. Wow, that was pretty bad. Let's quickly segue out of here to the next questionable piece of content. So I help defeat the preppy boys and Johnny appreciates it. On my way out, I find Lola and decide to try and swoop in there, but accidentally press the wrong button. Are you inbred or just naturally dumb? Don't you hate it when you try to compliment a girl and you accidentally call her inbred? It's happened half a dozen times to me in real life, so embarrassing. I soon discover that Lola is dating half the school, she's a randy gal. The guys pay money to be with her, so by definition she's a prostitute. So I guess my next question is, are you looking for a pimp girl or are you a sole trader? 
I decide to turn against the Greasers, and at this point it becomes apparent that Jimmy has no morals or loyalty at all. I'm actually starting to see why his mum abandoned him and left him at Bullworth Academy. Who wants to raise a backstabbing snitch? I tag the Greasers' turf by spray painting things like, Jimmy was here. My personal favourite line that he used to mock the Greasers was, I like cars and bikes because I can't handle people. Wow, Jimmy, out here flaming social anxiety, like that's a pretty serious issue, mate, come on. Joking about taking photos of kids is hilarious, but social awkwardness? Take a look in the mirror, Hopkins. They don't take this well and challenge me to a bike race. Okay, cool, let's do this. At least they're not trying to kill me. I love a good clean race, but then the first thing they do is punch me and I stall my start. Are you kidding me? It's called being a good sport. Wow, Johnny, even for you, that was low. I was looking forward to a good, clean, competitive bike race. Just like the Tour de France, where every single cyclist is taking excessive amounts of performance-enhancing steroids, so it's an even playing field. I end up getting that bread anyway, because Jimmy is a bloody specimen. He quickly raises the roof, all my party people say heck yeah, and then I kid you not, he makes out with Lola as a reward for winning the race. Well, given how much she gets around, I guess we've now got herpes, but a small price to pay for love. At least later tonight, I'll still be cycling, as Lola is the town bicycle, everyone's had a ride. Anyway, my spicy boo wants me to go and get her items back from Johnny's house, and I'm sort of a committed boyfriend with a smile that'll melt a heart, so I tell her that I'll do it. Wow, I'm actually such a bloody legend. I arrive at his house, and it's not exactly the four seasons in this part of town. I break in through the window, and is this really where the greasers hang out? This is some sort of decrepit drug flat, and if Lola is really spending time here, I think my herpes just got upgraded to chlamydia. I give her stuff back and we make out again, but this time she pays me. Damn, who's the prostitute now? The dynamic of this relationship is insane. Lola tells me that every single guy at our school is coming to fight for her and basically breaks up with me. How rude, I thought I'd finally found true love. This is the ultimate anime betrayal. Next thing I know, I'm fighting Johnny in some boss fight as he rides around on, you guessed it, a bicycle. The dude is really committed to making these bicycle fights happen, isn't he? So at this point, you're probably wondering, how did this game change my life then? Well, I defeat Johnny Boy and tell him to stop chasing Lola around as she's just playing all the boys at once. Now, little young me back in 2006 when this game was released learned a valuable lesson at this exact point in the game's storyline. It was some sage advice that has stuck with me forever. A pearl of wisdom that I've applied to many scenarios. And that is, don't trust a hoe. Thanks for watching you legends and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time and as always, stay classy.